But I'm saying one of the advantages of having research services after the war as a separate company was that one could um, undertake not only work uh, for government departments, uh, some of which was extremely interesting, um, but one could even undertake work for competitors of the London Press Exchange. Mm. Uh, they didn't mind in the least. Right. You know, I would undertake work for National Benzol, which was an LPE client, yeah. and simultaneously for Shell, because they didn't mind either. Yeah. But some of those early post-war surveys were, were very interesting. Um, the one, for example, on the productivity of British labour in the construction of the Fawley refinery, mm. um, where what happens, the Americans, um, ESSO, plan this refinery on the assumption that you would need a minimum of three British workers to do what two American workers would do. <laughs> they thought they were being optimistic about that. Um, and then suddenly they found the thing was going to be finished on time. Better than on time, if anything. Mm. So would I do a survey to find out why? <laughs> uh, you know, the, these clowns were behaving in such an un-British way. <laughs> and the, the answer was simple, the, the quality of management. Hmm. Um, that any British firm they'd gone to, the management was sitting in the Dorchester. You know, and they wouldn't go near the, the site at Forley. Hmm. Whereas the Americans, um, they were on the site. They were there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Their door was always open. If there was any difficult job, difficult in the sense that it was technologically newish to the British workers, they would say, fine, we understand why it's difficult. You were trained as welders, mm. but welding for a refinery is different. We appreciate that. In two weeks, we can give you the necessary training and I said, two weeks? An apprenticeship in this country is five years. And Bob Cole, the American in charge, would say, well, maybe it is five years, but uh, you'll, you'll be expert refinery welders in the end of two weeks. And they were. Mm. Or they said they wanted tea in the afternoon. <laughs> and how could you get tea? There was... Uh, no water supply laid on on the marshes there where they were. He said, that's okay, I'll get a water pipe laid on, there'll be a tap, you have to boil the water, but there will be boiling water. And it was within a week. Mm. Um, very efficient and intense. Yeah. And he persuaded me, he said, look, I give you an extra idea of what was tuppence an hour if you will agree to interchangeability of jobs. Mm that if there's nothing for this crew to do, but there is a lot to be done there, then you all, both the incoming and the ones who are the airport, will get an extra tons an hour right. if you shift and do it. Fine, okay. Um, so it's the attitude of management. And also, if there was any dangerous work to do, one of the American managers would say, uh-uh, look, we're going to put this on flare tonight. Mm. And when you put rig on flare, it can be dangerous. It usually isn't, but it can be. So we will handle it. Right. Mm. Um, and uh, that, uh, so, you know, one explained. It's a question of the competence, the attitude, the relationship with the British management. I remember one of the men, as I interviewed a lot of them then, one of them saying to me, you know, I tell you, you get your self-respect back when you work for someone you respect. And if you work for someone you don't respect, then you're ashamed of what you're doing. Mm. You and, that, and that was it. Mm.